uh, good afternoon to our respected SRC sir and my fellow teammates. Today, on 6th of December, we are going to uh, give a compiler design presentation on the topic LL1 parsing. My name is Nisha Kumari and I'm, I study in BPPI MTCSEA second year and I would request my teammates to introduce themselves as well. So kindly introduce yourself guys. Uh, hello, I am Vishal Kumar Chandu from BBPIMT second year, uh, third year. Uh. I am Apratim Kondo from BBPIMT CSE third year. I am Diti Priya Mondol from BBPIMT third year. And uh, I'll be accompanied by my group members uh, for uh, this presentation. So let's uh, begin. So our topic is LL1 parsing. So what does LL1 signify? Uh, the first L in LL1 signifies that the scanning of the input takes place from left to right. The second L means that we are using the leftmost derivation first in order to produce the result. And the number one indicates that only one look ahead is involved uh, in order to generate the result. So. Uh, for LL1 parsing, we need to create LL1 parsing table. So we are going to see the important functions that uh, is required to create LL1 parsing table and the important requirements uh, for uh, the LL1 parsing table from which the LL1 parsing uh, can happen. So in order to construct the parsing table, we have two functions. Uh, first and the follow function. In first function, if there is a variable, and uh, from that variable, if we try to derive all the strings, then the beginning terminal symbol is called first. And uh, in the follow function, uh, we determine that what terminal symbol could follow a variable in the process of derivation. Uh, so uh, the prime, prime requirements uh, for uh, the LL1 parsing is uh, the stack the parsing table, an input buffer, and the parsing program. So uh, this is uh, the diagrammatic representation of uh, the important requirements for uh, LL1 parsing. Uh, here is the input buffer. And we can see that it always ends with uh, the dollar sign. The dollar sign indicates that the string uh, here is ending, the input has come to an end. Uh, stack. Uh, the stack is the data structure that we used for the procedure of parsing. The parsing table. Uh, the parsing table is the data structure which we will construct using the given grammar. And the predictive parsing program. Uh, predictive parsing program is nothing but uh, the LL1 parsing algorithm, uh, the process that uh, uh, that we do in for uh, the LL1 parsing. Now we'll see uh, the example and uh, we'll see one of the example uh, and we are going to find out uh, the first and the follows and as well as the LL1 parsing table of the given grammar. So we see uh, the grammar uh, is uh, e derives t e dash e dash derives uh, plus t e dash or epsilon t derives f t dash t dash derives star f t dash or epsilon and f derives id or uh, opening bracket e close bracket so now we are going to find uh, the first and the follows for the given grammar uh, so you can see I have already written uh, the grammar uh, for my convenience. So it, it becomes easy uh, for me to make you understand. And uh, I've already created the first and the follow table. Uh, uh, but I'll explain how I, I did that. So um, uh, we, uh, 
see uh, how do we find the first of uh, the variables so uh, in order to find the first of uh, the variable e we uh, see that the first of variable t will also be the first of variable e so we go back to the derive uh, go to the deriva derivation that involves the variable t so the first of variable uh, t will also be the first of variable e so in the derivation t we see that t derives f t dash so uh, here we see that the first of f is going to be the first of t so uh, to, uh, we'll go to the derivation which involves f uh, in order to find the uh, first of f so finally we uh, reach the derivation uh, f derives id slash uh, opening bracket e and closing bracket uh, so uh, uh, like this way we found out that the derive uh, and the first of the derivation f derives id or uh, open bracket e close bracket is id and the opening bracket but uh, uh, so first we'll find out uh, the easy productions and then we'll proceed to find out uh, the first of e so uh, since e uh, uh, no uh, now uh, uh, we already calculated uh, the first of f now we'll uh, we'll uh, try to find out the first of t dash so we go back to the derivation that involves uh, t dash here we see in the fourth derivation that t dash derives star f t dash and epsilon so the first of t dash is asterisk or epsilon and uh, we wrote that uh, in the column in the first column for t dash now uh, we uh, will go to the derivation e dash in e dash we see that uh, e dash derives plus t e dash or epsilon so uh, the first of e dash is plus or epsilon so we wrote it in the first column for e dash now we will try to find out the first of t t uh, derives f t dash so the first of t will be the first of f and we have already calculated the first of f and the first of f that we calculated uh, previously was id and opening bracket uh, so we wrote it uh, for the t as well N uh, now we finally reached to the first of uh, e and we know that the first of e is the first of t and we have already calculated the first of e and first of e and t are say at the same so uh, first uh, we wrote id and opening bracket for that too now uh, for the follow column uh, since uh, uh, e is a start symbol we are always going to get a dollar as its follow and moreover look at the occurrence of e in the right hand side whether the uh, whether the variable e is occurring somewhere at the right hand side or not so yes we see that uh, uh, the variable e is occurring at uh, uh, the derivation f derives id uh, slash opening bracket e and closing bracket so uh, uh, we see that e is followed by the op uh, op uh, closing bracket so uh, uh, the follow of e will also be uh, the closing bracket now uh, the follow of e dash uh, follow of e dash is nothing but the follow of e uh, uh, we see the right hand occurrences uh, so uh, as we see the right hand occurrences because uh, uh, here uh, e dash uh, the follow of e dash is, will be nothing but the follow of e so a uh, follow of e dash will and e will be the same uh, now we are going to find out the follow of t uh, follow of t is uh, first of t dash right follow of t, yeah follow of t in the second derivation we can see that uh, the follow of t is the first of d, t dash because uh, t is followed by e dash and uh, the first of uh, the variable e dash will be uh, the follow of the variable t uh, so uh, uh, first of e dash we have already calculated 
is plus and epsilon. So uh, we'll write plus, but uh, there is a thing to notice that uh, we don't write epsilon uh, under the follow option. Uh, uh, we will substitute uh, instead. We are going to substitute uh, epsilon in uh, in e uh, in the first derivation. E uh, derives t e dash. Uh, so uh, in place of e dash. So uh, uh, the follow of e will also be the follow of t. So uh, the follow of t uh, is uh, plus as well as dollar and opening bracket. Similarly, we found out the follow of t dash and f. Uh, f uh, follow of f is the first of t dash in uh, in the derivation. We can see t derives f t dash. That is uh, that is uh, asterisk and uh, asterisk that is the star and uh, and epsilon. But uh, we don't write epsilon in the follow, so we substitute epsilon in t f t dash. In place of t dash, so now we get the follow of f becomes the follow of t. Uh, so we uh, uh, we included dollar and uh, the uh, closing bracket also. So uh, now we are going to uh, uh, create the parsing uh, LL1 parsing table, and uh, we are going to create the LL1 parsing table uh, by using the uh, first and a follow uh, table that we created in the last slide. So I have already uh, copied the, uh, the symbol as well as the first and follow uh, corresponding to it. Uh, let's see. I've already created uh, the parsing table, uh, but uh, I'll explain how we did that. So uh, it's uh, it, uh, LL1 parsing. Uh, parsing is basically a top-down uh, parsing. So, if two alternatives for a variable is present, then we should be sure which alternatives we are going to use. Uh, so, uh, because uh, the main purpose of top-down parsing is to find out what is the first generation uh, generation by the symbol. Okay, and uh, so uh, let me uh, tell you what are the components of the table. Uh, I've written the terminal symbols id plus uh, star opening bracket. Uh, closing bracket and uh, dollar. Uh, this uh, uh, this is the terminal symbol that we have used in our uh, deriva uh, derivations. Okay, and uh, uh, you can see that uh, I have uh, written dollar symbol as well uh, because uh, there is a chance we uh, can see dollar in the string because input string always ends with dollar. And uh, uh, for uh, okay. So now we uh, we are going to uh, see for the symbol e uh, for the derivation e derives t e dash. Uh, if we are uh, if we are seeing uh, e in the derivation process and if the symbol uh, that uh, I have to generate is id is id uh, the uh, then what production uh, will be apt for this we have to find out. Uh, that depends on the first of the production. Uh, that contains the given terminal symbols or not. We have to find out whether the first of the production uh, contains the given terminal symbol or not. Uh, uh, let's see the production e uh, derives t e dash. Uh, now, where do we uh, place this on? In uh, where do we place this on? We are going to place this on the e row because it contains the symbol e and. Uh, uh, now, oh, now uh, comes the question: Where, under which column we are going to, uh, we are going to uh, put uh, this derivation? So uh, let's see the production e uh, derives uh, uh, t e dash. Now, um, when we see e in the derivation, uh, uh, um, sorry, uh, generate uh, uh, the. First of t dash only, we are going to use the production of e t e dash, which is uh, 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 we have already calculated the first of production of e e, e, e derives t e dash, that is id and bracket. So we are going to place this derivation under the column id and uh, closing bracket. So this is uh, the derivation e derives t e dash. 
and e derives t e dash under the column id and opening bracket similarly we put every uh, 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 every derivation uh, 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 unto their corresponding columns uh, now uh, now uh, we see that uh, there is the occurrence of epsilon uh, in the first so what we do when we uh, encounter the epsilon in the first we don't write epsilon in the uh, uh, we don't write epsilon uh, we have not written epsilon in the terminal symbol right so we don't write epsilon so what we do is we uh, uh, we find uh, out uh, in order to place epsilon we find out uh, the follow of the left hand side uh, we find out the follow of the left hand side of the derivation so so yeah uh, accordingly we did that uh, and created this table and also uh, there is a, uh, there is a point to be noted that grammar that contains a left recursion uh, as well as the non deterministic grammar cannot be passed using this parsing method now uh, my teammates are going to uh, uh, explain you a few gate questions uh, uh, regarding L L one parsing. So over to you, uh, Didi Priya. Thank you, Nisha. Okay, you can start. Uh, the question is. Yeah. The question is for the grammar below. A partial L L one parsing table is also presented along with the grammar. Entities that in uh, need to be filled are indicated as e1, e2, and e3. Is the empty string so um, dollar indicate end of the input and end uh, of the production? So uh, here we can see uh, an example of a gate uh, question. The answer of this question will be A. Um, uh, so the question is uh, is is derive uh, is derived small a ca uh, capital A small b and capital B or uh, small b capital A small a uh, capital B and epsilon. So um, and uh, a derives s and b derives s. So the first of A uh, that will be A, B, and uh, epsilon because uh, uh, because A belongs to uh, S and um, and um, for S. Sorry. Um, Silent. and the first and the first of a uh, will be uh, first of is because first of a belongs to s so the uh, first of a will be a b and epsilon um, uh, belongs to s so the first of b will be a b and epsilon next uh, the follow of a so the follow of uh, because a belongs to s so the follow of s will be the uh, first of s so the answer will be b and a the follow of s uh, because s uh, is a starting point so the follow of uh, s will be a dollar and union of follow of a uh, that is b a and dollar and uh, follow of b uh, B uh, derive S, so the follow of B will be the first of S, that is B A and dollar. Next uh, question, uh, Vishal will explain. Uh, so this is a question from Gate CS 2015. Uh, if we consider the following grammar G, in which S derives F or H, and F derives P or C and H derives P or C. Uh, here, 
S, F and H are non-terminal symbols. P, D and C are terminal symbols. Which of the following statements are correct? So the statement one is LN, LL1 can parse all strings that are generated using the grammar G. And the statement two is LR1 can parse all the strings that are generated using the grammar G. So among the on, uh, answers, uh, the correct answer would be neither statement one or statement two is correct because the grammar that we have is ambiguous and there are two possible uh, leftmost derivatives for the string c the first leftmost derivative uh, is s derives f and f derives c and the second leftmost derivative is uh, s derives h and h derives c as we all know, an ambiguous grammar can neither be LL1 uh, nor LR1. Thank you. The next question would uh, will be explained by uh, Pratim Kundu. So this question is from Gate Level CS 2007. So we consider the grammar with non-terminals N, that is S, C, and S1, and with terminals A, B, I, T, E, with S as the start of the sim symbol. And the following sets of rule. So the question is that uh, the grammar is not LL1 because the option side is left recursive, option B it is right recursive, option C mm -hmm. option is obviously it is because it is ambi ambiguous. So now we uh, consider why the rest of the options are not correct. So for recursive um it should be of the form a derives a b where a is a single non terminal and b is any string of grammar symbols since it is not there so this grammar is not left recursive thus option a is not correct going to option b a uh, right recursive grammar has nothing to do with ll1 so option b is not correct and lastly for option d because the grammar is clearly a context-free grammar, so option D is also incorrect. So the rest, that is, we are left with option C. So option C is correct. And as we can see that an LL1 grammar doesn't give to multiple entries in a single cell of its parsing table, that, which means that it should be unambiguous. But here we can see that the grammar is ambiguous. So option C is correct. Thank you. So thank you. that was all uh, our presentation. Uh, thank you uh, for uh, thank you to SRC sir for giving us this opportunity to present, and thank you uh, to my team members uh, who uh, took this responsibility to present. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Thank you very much, Nisha, Vishal, Diti Priya, Aprotim.